All right, let's go because you know I came in to do. I don't get paid for overtime. I'm here to fight. The Mail Online are reporting that Conor Ben will not be banned from the WBC rankings with a ruling in his favour expected from the governing body. Conor, he's broke his silence. I told you I was innocent. And basically he's waiting on the WBC to make an announcement that will see him reinstated to their rankings. He's still ranked by the WBA and the IBF and WBO will probably follow suit if they did have him ranked previously. Now Ben, he provided the WBC a 270 page dossier that he believed would clear his name. And he's done so. He has done so. He always claimed it was contaminated. And that's the line right now. We have to wait to see what UCAB turn up. And it was like Connor sending in the heavies. He's sending the lawyers for the British Boxing Board of Control. And he's telling Robert Smith here, the secretary of the board. Don't worry, Robert Smith. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. Should they clear him? I mean, they didn't pop him in the first place. And like, their investigation is for what, really? It's not like they can find him dirty of anything. Because they can't retest him. The testing process... That ship sailed last year in the build-up for the Eubank fight. The agency the British Boxing Board of Control used, UCAD, didn't find him dirty of anything. So what are they doing? They're saying they're carrying out an independent investigation, but yet you want the dossier that he sent the WBC. The reason he's sending it to the WBC is because he was popped by VADA and the clean boxing program is commissioned by the WBC. Those are the parties he really needs to be cleared by. It's kind of like when... They passed Billy Joe Saunders when he got popped by the Massachusetts Commission before the aborted Andrade fight. The Massachusetts said he was dirty. The British Boxing Board of Control said he used whatever nasal congestion out of competition. Like he wasn't in camp or something when he took it. But according to Massachusetts, it was in competition within their rulings. Now, this is what I'm saying. Unless you have joined up thinking between the two agencies doing testing... You're always going to get chaos. I told you that. I said it how many times you need joined up thinking. How many times? But this here is just fucking confusing. And in my opinion, it's the border are coming off the ones looking stupid. It's them looking stupid. Incompetent. And you can go to the Billy Joe Saunders case, to the Tyson Fury case, with the ridiculous idea of a retroactive ban. This ain't the first time that they've showed inadequacy in this department. Connor was cleared by the appropriate parties he needed to be cleared by. It's as simple as that. Contamination. Eddie, as far as he's concerned, he's saying, fuck the British Boxing Board. That's a big statement, considering they dish out the licenses, but he's had enough. And he's saying they will get the dossier after the WBC completes their process and clear Connor. And he's smart to do that. Robert Smith... Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control. He said he wasn't too concerned about Connor bringing the lawyers in. He said he just wants to do the investigation, get it out of the way. They need answers. They haven't had any yet. There's no need for the investigation. What they're trying to do is puff their chest out by saying we're doing some investigation. Into what? Into what exactly? And I know a lot of people are thinking our beats is supporting Connor Ben. You can say whatever you want, man. Like, I don't have no power over the adjudication at all. Maybe you think I do, but I don't. I will tell some of you, because there's a lot of young men listening, though. You know, don't worry about Beats. Beats is doing what he's doing. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. What you should be studying is Conor Ben and how he's handling his business. All this, well, I think he's dirty and you think this means that, when it doesn't mean that because you're in your feelings means nothing. Yeah? These institutions are no joke. The man bought a 270-page dossier. The board know they can't fuck with that. Like, most of you have had your say, and I've let you have your say, and a lot of what you said wasn't accurate, a lot of you, about this case. You know, like, Eddie broke it down today that the British Boxing Board of Control got all the information, the test results, the same day that they did. As soon as Matram got the results... They handed it to the British Boxing Board of Control. If they wanted to sanction the fight, they could have did that. But they sat on it for five weeks saying what? We need more information. We need more information. They're saying the same thing today. With this independent investigation. They're saying the same thing today. You know, they sat back. Let Eddie take all the blame, right? 
let Matram and the zone incur all the cost of them finally shutting the show down three weeks before the first bell because of the mole, the alleged mole, who leaked it to the press. And I had people in the comment section, oh, you're misdirected blaming the British Boxing Board of Control. I'm misdirected blaming the people who are supposed to regulate and run the sport in the country. Now, the board doesn't want to be seen like they're getting bullied by Eddie or Connor. Connor might have to base himself in the States, though. I'm not, I'm not sure if they license Connor. I'm not sure. But that might expose them to being a bit petty. He'll be back to fight in the UK. I believe that. But maybe not this year. Maybe not this year. Vacant Bridgeweight title by the way of the WBC. So Matram have been outbid by the Polish outlet Knockout Promotions, which will pit Alan Babic, 11-0, 10 knockouts, representing Matram from Croatia against Lukas Rosanski from Poland, 14-0, 13 knockouts. So you can almost guarantee fireworks in this one. Rosanski, 37 years of age. Why has he been inactive since May 2021 when he knocked out Artur Spilska in a round. I'm sure we'll find out. He also destroyed Uzag Beyoguno. Babic has become somewhat of a cult figure on Matrim and maybe this is what Matrim valued the fight at but you would have thought they would have secured this bid here to give Babic the hometown advantage. He is based from the UK. But they've been outbid by 75,000 Knockout promotions have put up $425,000. No smoke boxing. Dig yourself up. And Matram put up three fifty. Fifty fifty split between the number one ranked contender Babich and number three ranked Rosansky. Will Matram pick up the international rights? Or the zone, should I say? Because I'd like to see the fight without having to search for a stream. I'm sure we'll get the international rights. I, I, I'm quite certain of that unless bloody sky stick their oar in because their mission seems to consist of oh well if matram won it we're going to get it before them and upstage them so this is for the vacant title that oscar rivas gave up this will be the second bridge away fight since the inception of the division no smoke boxing say it's a 50 50 explosive unpredictable contest which will be must see tv i mean both men undefeated have stopped all their opponents bar one and Babbage's last fight was crazy against Adam Balski. Both men like the knockout. Eddie, get this fight. Get this fight, man. At least get the international rights. Come on, man. I'm speaking on behalf of the DAZN subscribers here. Get this fight. The much-anticipated rematch was supposed to take place on March the 4th. Josh Taylor pulled out with a foot injury. Jack Catterall left disappointed again. The fight looks doomed. It looks doomed to me. Josh never wanted the fight. He tried to convince the public that he won when most of the public thought he lost. When he realized he wasn't winning that battle, and, well, some people say he gave up his belts, he's left with one strap now, the WBO strap. His pride almost pushed him into a corner and said, OK, I have to take it, you know. But I never felt he was fully committed to this rematch. I never felt it. I never felt it. This is just opinion. A lot of this is just opinion. I wasn't shocked when he pulled out. I wasn't shocked. He can't motivate himself to fight this guy. I don't believe. And I spoke about it before the first fight. I don't think, and for that matter, I don't think he can be effective at 140 again. I don't believe he can. Now, he could be injured, but he could be injured and be milking the injury. Bob Aram said he's trying to get the fight rescheduled for June. Catterall needs to get on with his career. It's Josh who has the problems making 140. He has the alleged injury. He has the turmoil that he doesn't believe he won the fight. I'm sure when he watched it back. And a lot of people who observe the fight don't believe he won the fight. Let Josh deal with his issues if I was Jack. And get on with your career. There's lots of good fights out there. His stock rose in that controversial defeat. And he should go take them fights. Don't wait around for Josh Taylor. And his title shot. It's not worth it. I mean, Catterall has just sat around since then and hasn't fought. I mean, he wasn't injured. You fought twice since 2019. Twice. You know, he took the step aside money, let Josh fight Jose Ramirez rather than fulfill his mandatory obligations. 
But now his own career is suffering for that. He needs to be active. He needs to be way more active. He's 29. This is the prime of his years. If you're going to take on any of the other big names at 140, you've got to do it now. Waiting for this title shot is not acceptable. Regis Prograce has just had Jose Ramirez turn down a fight with him and Teofimo Lopez. Well, you could step in. You could step in here. You now have the clout to do that. You have Sky behind you. Do something. Don't wait for Josh Taylor. I think our relationship with Top Rank, what, what we're doing is very similar to what Top Rank and ESPN are doing. And we have a good relationship, we respect Top Rank, and I believe that ESPN Plus and DAZN are actually the future of boxing. I think if you're a fight fan, you should have both. It's $15 a month. So there could be a, um, a DAZN slash ESPN card if it... Oh, steady, steady on. Steady, <laughs> one step at a time. No, I, I don't know, we're competitors, but it's friendly. And I think these other networks and platforms are going to be looking at boxing like HBO did. I expect Showtime to leave the sport in 12 months because it's too ferocious, it's too competitive that people like, not Steven Espinosa, but the people above him will look at boxing and go, this is expensive mm -hmm. and I'm not sure it's generating the business that we need it to, mm -hmm. just like HBO did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a decision of Pete and Nelson, it was just the bosses looked at it and said, this market's gone crazy, everything's too expensive and we're not delivering the numbers. So goodbye. Bob Arum, he said the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but Showtime might yeah, be... I think Bob Arum's right. I think, Showtime, I, I think Showtime have a very limited future in boxing. It's not Showtime anymore, says Jimmy Lennon. Instead, get ready for Paramount Plus with Showtime on cable and streaming. Basically, it's going to be the rebranding of Showtime, of the Showtime premium cable channel before the end of this year. It says here on Bad Left Hook, it's a stunning move that marks the end of Showtime's 47-year standalone identity as a premium cable channel. It also marks another evolution of the parent company formerly, formerly known as Viacom CBS. Less than a year after it was rebranded and restructured as Paramount. We will divert investment away from the areas that are underperforming and that account for less than 10% of our views. Now the question is, where does boxing fit in amongst all of that? They're saying that a second season of American Gigolo and the second season of Let the Right One In will not be aired. They've already got rid of the first season of a program called Free Women. They're comparing this to HBO and them getting out of the boxing industry. But is that premature? They're saying the potential end of Showtime boxing would also have obvious second and third order effects on Al Heyman's PBC. Well, if some of the recent pay-per-views are anything to go by, it's obviously not a money spinner. But the non-pay-per-view events, which are just part of your subscription, how well are they doing? I'm not sure. They might be doing good numbers. This story broke for me today. I don't know if it's been around for a while longer, but it's coming out around the time we're hearing news that The Zone are structuring a deal with Amazon Prime, who are huge in America. Opportunities seem to be opening up for The Zone, and they seem to be limiting themselves at Showtime. More news when it arrives about this one. It's very interesting. Don't really trust the World Boxing News site, but despite their obvious biases, some of the journalism is tangible. So let's go with this. Last year, November, they're talking about Jake Paul flop deal could be the final nail in Showtime Boxing's coffin. You know, he came over from Triller after Mike Tyson and Roy Jones really put up all them numbers and he rid off the back of that like he was selling all the pay-per-view and he done well first fight against Tyrone Woodley done 500k the rematch though done 65k and they're saying that the Anderson Silva fight done 200k and despite all the followers he's got on social media it's not transferring to pay-per-view buys and in a way I'm wondering if a similar thing is going to happen if Ryan Garcia fights Tank like Ryan has got all these Instagram followers and I'm sure Tank has a few. And some people are theorizing that they're big stars on the back of that. But until it converts into pay-per-view buys, you can never really tell. You can never really tell. You know, there was also the Caleb Plant Canelo fight. Canelo stepped off with 50 million. Caleb got 10 million. And Canelo basically hit and run without buying Showtime dinner. You know, it's too early for me to speculate any further. We'll come back to this with further developments. I can't find a clip I had earlier, so I could reference some points. But Baturbi of getting two 
mandatories on the bounce, Cannon Smith next. And apparently the WBC are adamant that he has to fulfill his mandatory obligations. So a bivol fight is not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. Not for undisputed anyway. Not unless Arthur gives up one of the belts and they still go for it. But is it the politics between Russia and the Ukraine? Why it's being blocked? Has that got something to do with it? Because remember, like Suleiman, he put a ban on all Russian WBC champions and contenders. And then a little while after that, they backtracked on that. But just because it's not official doesn't mean that they're going to make it easy for Russians to get WBC sanctioned fights. But it's quite sad. It's quite sad if it's come to that, really. It really is. Mmm.